Here's where we're going to begin. Some people may wonder, yes. does the world really need another activist hedge fund manager? Yes. Given the fact that this is your business, I know your answer is obviously yes. My question is why? We're taking a little bit of a different approach. The typical activist might look sort of for short-term oriented capital allocation changes to make. You can't possibly be referring to Carl Icahn. I'm not referring to anyone. And that, that approach makes money for many people. Our view is we think we can make companies more competitive and better positioned over the long run if we think about a longer term view, call it a three to five year type view. So we're looking at both capital allocation specific changes, including um, strategic initiatives, operational improvements, capital structure changes, as well as ESG changes that are linked to returns uh, to make companies on a systemic basis more competitive and more profitable over the long run. What you describe sounds more like private equity than it does hedge fund. Yes. We are very Except it's public companies that you're exactly investing right. in. We are, our approach is very similar to private equity, except we're not levering up a company uh, and we're not taking majority uh, ownership positions. Uh, but we're looking out over a many, you know, multi-year period saying, how can we engage with the board and at times take board seats to affect change in a very positive way for the company so that it could drive a great shareholder returns. Explain to me this ESG component. Yes. And the reason I'm interested, well, there are lots of reasons I'm interested, but let's just say this. ESG means a lot of things to a lot of people, mm -hmm. and many of those people look at it and say, you know what, that's kind of squishy and I don't really trust it. You're exactly right. We're very early innings for ESG. It does mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, and our view is that we are taking a very focused approach to ESG. The things that we consider ESG that we're focused on are one, is it material to the business that we're investing in? And two, is it linked to economic returns? How can ESG link to economic returns? There are two ways. One, you can lower companies' cost of capital by accessing a lower cost of equity. Or you can also access a lower cost of debt. And two, are you pursuing ESG-specific initiatives that actually link to economic return, to IRRs. What's a good example of how an activist firm like yours would employ ESG to improve financial returns? Sure. Again, e ESG... That's it's just one. That's not easy to see. That's correct. Uh, it's one additive element. And as opposed to when we go into a company and say you should spin out this division because it's dragging on your multiple and dragging on your growth. Which is something you might do anyway. This is something we're going to do. And you'll see an immediate response. ESG um, will have a positive change and it will build over the long run. But an example is, you know, if a company has a governance problem, we can engage with the board and convince them, just as an example, to de-stagger the board. A stagger board is a sign of an entrenched board. And a lot of these um, uh, proxy advisory firms like ISS and risk metrics will give you negative sort of scarlet uh, grades and scarlet A grades for having poor governance. If you can improve the governance at a company such that it's included in uh, the mass out there uh, or linked to ESG, you just have a lower cost of equity. Similarly, if you're making an investment in uh, an energy efficient initiative within the company, you can access a lower cost of debt in the form of green bonds or sustainability bonds. So if you were to you know, otherwise borrow at five and three quarters, you might be able to borrow at 5%. And it's because there's so much capital going into both the equity side uh, of ESG and sustainability and the debt side as well. Are you labeling yourselves activism plus ESG in an effort to distinguish yourselves from other activists? Yes, that's right. So, uh, well, we're, we distinguish ourselves from other activists in many ways. As I said, you know, we're focused on long-term yes. systemic change, um, but we're also doing ESG uh, in a very proactive manner. So some activists are looking at ESG as almost a risk overlay. We're saying to ourselves, let's just focus on these ESG items and actually promote change and improvement to help companies get stickier customers, employees, and shareholders. How can you stick with the longer term investment horizon, do you have more patient capital? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, 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 yes, our capital will be more patient capital. That gives us the luxury of looking out over a multi-year period. Do you think that's more necessary in the, in the kind of environment yeah, we, I, you we know, live in now and with the kinds of expectations, well, obviously the way the market is performing and with the kinds of expectations that shareholders have for companies? You know, I think that, you know, there's been a lot written about this, and I do think there, um, some public companies have been plagued by a short-termism mentality. And so we think that... So Larry Fink is right. Um, I think that there is a, there's an element of short-termism. I don't know if I can say that across the board and generalize it for every company, but I do think companies are very short-term focused, focused on making their quarter. I think it's a combination of designing the right incentives so that companies are, you know, 
where we'd be different from another activist is we'd say, yes, maybe you should make that investment in innovation or technology. And that might depress margins in the near term in the next quarter or two. Not many other activists would say that. But it's going to drive a strong IRR over the long run. And it'll, you know, it'll sort of put the gap between you and your closest competitor just that much further. Um, but I do think you know, that happens to be linked to designing incentives that incentive a management team to focus on the long run. And you know, management teams like talking to us because we're not asking questions about, oh, what, you know, what are trends for the quarter? We're asking about what are your strategic plans for the three to five year? Tell me a little bit about the style of activism you're going to be practicing. You worked for Cliff Robbins in Blue Harbor. Yep. Cliff isn't you know, looking for a public fight. Mm -hmm. right? He calls himself, what, a suggestivist? <laughs> Right? Instead of a, what some people think of as the fire-breathing letter, you know, yeah. poison pen activist. Listen, at Impact of Capital, we're focused on using all, all the tools available in the toolkit. So any tool that any activist can use, we'll be using. On the main, we would, you know, we would hope to go into companies in a very friendly manner. In fact, I've been invited on many boards. I sit on a board where I had no ownership. Um, but, and, and I think we've built, my partner and I have built a reputation as very thoughtful, um, um, and constructive investors. However, um, we believe that if you know, if in order to protect our LPs' capital, we're, we we are willing to use the proxy if we need to.